and welcome to worship this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. You're so welcome here as we hear God's word for us, as we receive God's forgiveness for us through the meal of Holy Communion. Uh, it is a big and lovely day today here at Dilworth Lutheran because from 5 to 7 p.m. tonight, we are celebrating our new youth minister, Mackenzie, and her husband, Emma. Emma, you got to stand because Mackenzie's getting new batteries. <laughs> uh, because their very first baby is coming in just a month. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, and so today from 5 to 7, you and yours are welcome to come on uh, in for an open house as we celebrate uh, this really wonderful, uh, wonderful almost event in the life of the congregation. Uh, baby boy Omara will be here uh, in just uh, six-ish weeks or so. Uh, and two prayer requests from our uh, community at large. Many of you have seen these. Uh, first of all, many of you have heard that Churches United for the Homeless uh, just up the road on Highway 10 is in significant need right now. Uh, and so we are praying. We, of course, made a significant financial gift as a congregation, uh, but we are praying and figuring out how to uh, love our neighbors, especially people who have been recently homeless. And so please do pray for Churches United. Uh, some of you have also seen that yesterday morning at Prairie Heights uh, Community Church in West Fargo, there was a shooting in the parking lot, uh, and uh, someone passed away because of that. It was before, uh, no church events were happening at the time, uh, but I, my, I hope that we continue to pray uh, that God will bring peace and hope and joy and compassion again to that poor congregation. Uh, just uh, a whole lot of love sent uh, to our West Fargo brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, and finally, John, do you want to try rolling the video? We have something important coming for you. Here it comes. That was less cool than we thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so our stewardship committee is half teenagers, so they love videos. <laughs> so, uh, we are hosting a hot dish contest for you. The glory of the land is available. <laughs> the glory of a year and this trophy are available. On September 8th, we're having a kickoff Sunday. It's the first weekend where our choir will be back. It's the first weekend where church school uh, will be here again on Sundays. And we'll have a potluck right after church that day with a most remarkable hot dish contest. <laughs> so, it doesn't mean it's the best tasting, it means it's remarkable. Uh, so uh, the sign up is online and we'll have a paper sign up starting next week. Uh, and also I ask and invite you to start praying. Our Sunday school and Wednesday school teachers are trained uh, this week. We have all kinds of things at confirmation for uh, Two grades has already started, one more grade starts this week, so please do pray uh, for our young people as they head back into a year of learning. Uh, and I invite you now to stand as we begin with our invocation. We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us every step of our lives. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share signs of peace with one another. And we'll continue by praising our Lord with song. Thank you. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. If we have died with Christ, we will also live with Christ. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, it is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. We are broken, but God's promises are not. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. God's promise calls us together for a reason. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
Please be seated. The first reading is found in Psalm 34, beginning at the ninth verse. O fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer from want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The word of the Lord. The second reading is found in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning at the 15th verse. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Jesus told his disciples, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Lord. Please be seated. Okay, do we have any kids out there? Come on down and join me. Yay! We have a few today, so fun. Clay, we got a lot of kids. You can join them. You bring Colt even? Come on, bring them all. All right, let's sit up here a little bit more. Awesome. Okay. Have any of you seen the movie Aladdin? Have you seen it? Have you guys? Okay, okay, what happens in the movie Aladdin? What's kind of the big, the big thing that happens? What do you remember about it? What do you think? You can look at the picture to help. Do you know who this person is? Aladdin. <laughs> the movie's named after him, yes. Okay, how about this guy? The big blue guy. The genie, yes. Okay, so Aladdin finds this magic lamp, right? And then a genie pops out. And what does the genie give to Aladdin? Three wishes, right? He says you can wish for anything in the world. Except more wishes. Yep, uh -huh. and then there's some rule about love, right? That too. But anything in the world. So I wanted to think, what if we could wish for anything in the world? What would we wish for? Oh, it's a big question. What would we, what would we wish for? 
You got any answers? What do you think? I know, it's a tough one. What do you think? Maybe like a pet dog, lots of money so you could buy anything you want. That would be greedy. Oh my gosh, you've come up to so many of these. You're learning too much. Uh, what about, what about summer to never end? Or do you like school? If summer never ended, what would happen? Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Yes. Okay, those are bad wishes. Those are bad wishes. All right, I'll give it to you. Well, in our Bible, in the Old Testament, okay, there's a guy named Solomon, right? And he asks for something amazing. We didn't even think of what he asked for. So he's a king of Israel, and he asks God for wisdom. <gasps> Isn't that an amazing wish? Did that even cross your mind? Be honest, no. It didn't cross my mind either. Nope. <laughs> nope, I didn't. But he was a king of Israel, and he asked God for wisdom because he was like, oh, I want to rule over your people well. I want to know what's right and what's wrong. So God was so impressed that he asked for wisdom, right, instead of money or nice things like other people usually do, like we were kind of thinking about. Yeah. And he gives him wisdom. He becomes the wisest person, like, ever. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> yeah, a lot of wisdom. So in one of our Bible readings today, God tells us, he says, hey, you got to be careful how you live. You can't act like fools, but who are we to act like? People who are wise. So what do you think wisdom is? It's a big word. We've been talking about it, but I haven't told you. What do you think wisdom is? <sighs> Being smart. That's a good one. Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah, so when I think of wisdom, I think, hmm, being wise helps me to know what is right, right? Kind of what God wants for me to do, and then it helps me to do it. Isn't that amazing? Right? So like Solomon, I think we can also ask God for wisdom. Because he tells us, hey, I want you to be wise. I want you to be careful how you live and to be wise. So what are some ways we can increase our wisdom? How can we become wise? What do you think? What do you think? How can we become wise? Ooh. Go to school. Great answer. Mm-hmm. Any others? How can we become wise? What do you think? Be kind to others. Yes, definitely. Maybe come to church, read our Bible, pray. What if we learn from other wise people? I think that's a good one. Well, in the Bible, God tells us, he says, hey, if you ask me for wisdom, I'll give it to you. Isn't that so simple? So I thought today we could ask for wisdom, right? Because God wants us to live carefully, to live with wisdom. So let's do it in prayer, okay? Fold your hands and repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, give me wisdom. Help me to do what is right and to know what is right. Thank you for making me wise. In your name, amen. All right, thank you guys. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this past week... Our family, my dad's side of the family, gathered in southwest Minnesota for the funeral of my dad's cousin. Uh, he had lived a long and colorful life, uh, and his funeral was at the same country church where my grandma and her seven siblings and my grandpa and his 11 siblings were all raised. Uh, as our kids walked through the parking or the graveyard right next to the church, they said, oh, that's where all of our relatives are. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it is also where my dad and most of his cousins were raised, where I was baptized, where my siblings were baptized and confirmed too. And maybe, like your family, our wide extended family of second and third cousins and all sorts of relatives seems to gather most often now at funerals. 
Much of our extended clan was there, uh, right by Hot Creek Lutheran, in fact. Uh, and when the funeral committee finally, hours after the funeral, said, last call, <laughs> we all still laughed. We got one more cup of coffee, and we stayed late visiting because we know that it is good to be together in loss. We shared coffee and lunch, we consoled each other, we told stories, and most of all, we were there to put our trust in the resurrection of Jesus, to trust that his word is the last word on all of our lives. Now, particularly for my kids' generation, kids who all mostly live hours and hours away from cousins and cousins and cousins of cousins, it was a reminder that our family is part of this large constellation of people, people who pray for them, people who will visit with them about playing the piano or about how their politics are wrong as 10-year-olds, <laughs> people who really want to hear how their week at Bible camp went this summer, people who just straight out care about them. Now, Joey Goodall is a professor and a pastor, and he shared a piece a couple months ago in the Mockingbird magazine called In Praise of Third Party Parenting. And he writes, as parents, we want to believe that we'll be able to provide for our children, and we will up to a point. God has put us in their lives for a reason. There are certain things we can provide for them that no one else could. However, when we are realistic about human nature, we know that our limitations will leave multiple openings in children's lives that we are totally unqualified to fill. Pretending this isn't the case only leads to frustration and strife for both parties. This is where third-party parents come in. These are people who are not biological parents, but who will, in some way, help children feel loved. Who may only be in their lives for a short while, but who will leave an indelible impression on them nonetheless. These people take many forms. Teachers, coaches, aunts, uncles, neighbors, friends, friends' parents, bosses, people at church, and people who show up in ways that feel almost serendipitous. Now, as a congregation for hundreds of kids each year, we third-party parent so that kids will know God so that kids will know the saving love of Jesus that is for them. Now, two of our ministry priorities for the next five years are growing generational faith. So whatever generation you happen to be in, there will be ways for you to know God, to love your neighbors, and to serve. And the next one is creating and growing connections. How, as God's people, are we connected to each other? How are we connected to the community, to the people that God gave us to love and serve? Now, this week, our Wednesday and our Sunday school teachers, God bless them, <laughs> will be trained uh, with our Faith Formation Director McKinsey. And later this fall, in just a couple weeks, we have a new opportunity for you you will be invited to become a prayer partner, a prayer connector through prayer or care for these different groups of young people in the church. You'll have the opportunity to pray each week for a small group of kids by name, just first names. And for those who enjoy Costco runs, you will be invited to bring treats just once a year for either our high schoolers as they jump into their New Testament book studies or for our third graders as they get their first Bible. Uh, we have all kinds of opportunities for people to jump in and to pray by name for these children of our church. And we're doing this because we trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. We trust that God is giving us each other to live a life of faith together. We know that we all need these third-party parents, whether we are three years old or 93 years old. We need these connections of people that care about each other. And God does indeed give us each other for visiting with each other, for support, for sharing coffee and consolation. 
when we see and know that we need each other, that we need each other in our lives, it's a reminder that we're actually better together. We help each other trust that Jesus' resurrection is actually the last word for our lives. And we need his word. We need his word every day, every week. We need that wisdom that can only come from God. Now today we heard Jesus say, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. If you heard our scripture today and the fleshiness of it was a bit off-putting or at least it made you listen up, you are in good company. Uh, the very first people who heard Jesus said this, some of them were a bit revolted. Some of them scratched their heads and didn't know what to think as Jesus told them of all things to eat his body and to drink his blood. Well, there are two things. First of all, we trust that when Jesus was sharing these words, which are hard to listen to, it isn't normal for humans to talk about eating flesh and drinking blood. The first thing is that Jesus was preparing us for a time when he is not physically here. After, at the Last Supper, Jesus gave the gift of Holy Communion to his people. He knew that in body, he would not be on earth anymore, and still he wanted to connect with his disciples in such a regular way. And so when we eat the bread and drink the wine of communion, we trust because he tells us that he is truly present here for us, that he is present in his body and his blood. It's a mystery. We do not understand all the how and the why and the when, but we know that God is here for us. When we hear the words, this is Jesus' body given for you, those words are Jesus' promise to you, a promise that has come every day around the world for these thousands of years since that Last Supper. And the second thing, when Jesus says, whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh, I think that he's actually trying to turn up the temperature a little for us. I think he's trying to catch our attention, to make us wonder what in the world he is talking about. And I think he's doing this because faith simply is not always comfortable. Ingesting Jesus, whether it is in communion or in hearing his word, hearing God's wisdom, which is very different often than the wisdom of our world, letting Jesus become so a part of us that his body, his blood, his wisdom is in our very being, not just hedging our bets with a little bit of spirituality now and again, or having Jesus as the icing on the cake of the life that we are building for ourselves, but having Jesus as the center, as central in laying our whole lives before him in everything that we are, this is hard. It is often uncomfortable. And it's uncomfortable because we are good at being in control. We want to call the shots. We want to make the decisions. We want to make the plan for how our days unfold. Sometimes, think about parenting, we even want to create other people's plans for them. And maybe for those of you, think about your own parents, or if you're a parent, think about how you have done this. Parenting can be a fine line between guiding children and seeking control of their lives. It is a line between those which is easy to cross. That Joey Goodall, in the same article, shared an insight from his own life. He writes, Although my father was around when I was growing up, our relationship has never been an easy one. Very different temperaments, different values, different interests, which when I was young, frequently felt like some sort of cosmic mix-up. It probably wasn't until sometime in my 30s that I realized the providence of this setup. I'm not saying this tr holds true in all accounts, 
but there has to be some sort of something like this to make it clear to many of us that we have to place our ultimate trust in God, not even in the people who God gives us. Our ultimate trust is put in God. You know, it's natural. It is part of who we are to grow through these third agent parents, through friends, through family, through teachers and coaches and churches. And in people, we do this because we know that they are God's gifts to us. But ultimately, the care and the hope and the joy, the center of our lives, it only comes through this salvation that we receive in Jesus. And we resist allowing Jesus to be close to us, in part because our very selves want to be independent. We want to do our own thing. We don't like submitting to these basic laws of God, like the Ten Commandments, much less to the presence of God in our days. The one who created the heavens and who knit us together before we were born. Because of the challenge of faith, because of the challenge of throwing our lot and our life in with God, this is a tough sell, even on our most faithful days. Now, shortly before World War I, there was a German Lutheran uh, pastor, and actually he was a politician. Uh, and interestingly, he was a faith healer. He went around the South German countryside uh, praying and healing people. We don't get that as often up here in Holly, huh? <laughs> uh, but he wrote something that I have been pondering for a few months here uh, about the Holy Spirit, about how God is with us today. He writes, Sometimes the Spirit gives you warm, nice feelings, but the most reliable sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit is the unsettled feeling that accompanies profound change. When you feel like the ground is moving beneath your feet, what it feels like birth pangs, look for the birth pangs and not the warm feelings. And there you will find God's life. In receiving communion, in hearing God's word, in receiving the wisdom that only God gives. We receive this beautiful life from God that is so often something new, something that is growing within us, that is not wholly comfortable, but is wholly good. And this life, of course, is not without its challenges but even greater than those challenges is the good and the wholeness and the peace that comes from God. The hope and the joy we receive. Scripture promises that Jesus loved me and gave himself for me so that we might have life now and life in eternity. Now the God whose grace does not run out gives us the power and the confidence to receive him to live and to serve and not give up hope on each other, to not give up hope on family, to not give up hope on the church, to not give up hope on the world. The God who loves us so dearly that he's willing to come into our lives, to love us in our weakness, to share his wisdom when it's the least popular thing in the world, to love us when relationships are difficult, to love us and those we love when we happen to be unlovable. This is our God who promises to lead us with strength. This is our God who wants to be so near to us that we, he becomes part of our very selves. This is our God who is with us today and into his heavenly home. Thanks be to God. Amen.
invite you to stand as we respond to God's word with a statement of faith. We believe God is our creator and has promised to love us always. We believe Jesus Christ, fully God and fully human, is God's promise living among us. He experienced all the pain and joy and challenges of human life. God's forgiving love was revealed to us when Jesus suffered death on the cross. He came back to new life and has promised us new life in the unity with God. We believe the Holy Spirit is God's promise touching our spirits, guiding us even through the darkest and most difficult moments of our lives. We believe God is among us in community. Mysterious, yet very real, God promises to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Please pray with me. Holy God, we live in a world where people need connection. Connection with family, connection with friends, connections with the body of Christ, and connections with you. God, please open our days and our hearts to connect with each other and you. As we look to fall, we pray especially for those who are seeking spiritual homes. We pray, God, that you will move your Holy Spirit with them, that they will find hope, that they will find rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for our community. We pray for Dilworth, Glendon, Felton, Moorhead, and Fargo. We pray for those working and seeking solutions to homelessness. We pray especially for the ministry of Churches United. We pray, too, for police and first responders, for West Fargo, and all involved in yesterday's violence at Prairie Heights. God, we know that you are strong and that you can bring peace to our world. Please, Lord, rain it down upon us. Lord, in your mercy. And God, you are the bread of life. We ask that you grow your presence, your wisdom in our lives, that you help us to turn to you every day and with every need. We pray for parents, for those who care for kids and teens as third-party parents. We pray for people of every age in need of your care. We lift those known in need of prayer this week to you. Together, we pray for Shell, Valerie, Elsie, Jan, Tom, Lorna, Dale, Ron, Gunner, Jody, Nicole, Dana, Charlene, Jim, Frank, and Jerry. God, your mercy has the last word in our lives and in our world. We pray, God, that you hold those who are mourning, those in need of prayer, in your tender care. And please, God, rain down your mercy and give us your daily bread and your salvation for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we'll worship God with our offering.
invite you to stand and body your spirit as we receive God's gift for us in Holy Communion. The Lord be oh, offering prayer. <laughs> Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And Lord, keep teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated.
invite you to please rise in body or spirit. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And uh, young people or not young people who love percussion instruments, come on up for uh, our closing song. And once you grab your instruments, we'll do our closing blessing. It's this little light. So come on up, boys and girls. We got instruments. <laughs> this is the enthusiasm we're looking for. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep, come on up, boys. And grab your instruments, and then we'll receive God's blessing and sing our way out of here. And now let us go out with God's love to nurture us, with God's peace to comfort us, and God's truth to guide us, remembering God's promise to be with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.